recording, screen share. All right, so this is Kevin Falcon, right? That's what you yes. talked about. Uh huh. And this is a. Uh, these are just the games that I thought to to send because me and Graham decided we're gonna play a little serious. Okay. Well, let's see. Ready? Oh. Oh. Okay, what do you think? I think there's a lot of times where, well, at least from what I was looking at, it's like there's a lot of moments holding ledge where it's off ledge, probably at a really bad timing for, like, like the pay, the reading the drift definitely isn't working out correctly. Mm -hmm. Is a big one that I see a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, your edge guarding what made you lose a lot of kills, right? I mean, he didn't like punish you particularly well. So it didn't make you lose the game, but I agree your edge guarding was uh, pretty deficient that set. What else? Um, 
Besides that, ah, uh, that's the biggest thing I noticed is everything off ledge. Other stuff, uh, I guess, you could help me pick out, but yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I know that. So I'm kind of glad that I was right because you remember whenever we talked about this idea briefly uh, at the Lafayette Weekly, I was like, yeah, probably the first thing we're going to go over is edge guards. Mm -hmm. So cool. Uh, let's look at the edge guards. So I'm going to tell you the edge guard flowchart, and then I will show you in a vod uh, how to do it. So the edge guard flowchart works like this. Uh, the first thing you do when we fast forward to a spot where you, where you drop an edge guard. Okay, so, well, yeah, okay, this is a perfect one. Okay, so right here, uh, mm -hmm. this works really well because, you know, Falcon is, like, most weird to edge guard whenever he's, like, starting from up here in the corner because there's, like, a bunch of, like, weird shit you can do. Like, normally, whenever, you know, he's low and then he drifts around it, you're just like, oh, well, you know, I, I suck and I, like, mistimed it or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But in a, in an instance like this, this is where it's the most weird. So this edge guard starts by, uh, you kind of have the right idea when you got right next to the ledge, where you roll to the ledge. It starts with rolling to the ledge. You roll to the ledge because you want to get as close to it as possible. So right here, you would roll to the ledge, and then you would full hop off backwards, and then double jump up, to back air him as he's reaching the top of his upbeat. So as long as you can figure out that, so the roll to the ledge and then doing it that way is the easiest way to set it up. But once you mm -hmm. figure out the timing, then uh, you can put, uh, I'm pretty sure you can put like whatever interpretive twist you want to on it. Yeah, so can we go back and watch that one, I guess, really quick? Yeah. Um, so. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So I feel like the first thing I do, right, is like kind of like go high. I mean, I do it in a really weird way, but like I get on the platform and then I jump from the platform to watch him. But um, I guess I don't go far enough out because like, so here I get on the platform, I see that he's high, right? Yeah. And then uh, I land and I jump again to go high, but I see him start his down B. Mm -hmm. I th think so. I, I just go back and then try to grab ledge. Well, after the down beat, you can actually just hit him. Yeah, I guess it's punishable right there. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what I watch. I see the down beat and it's to attack, right? Yeah. I was like, I do go up to match him, sort of, but then I see him coming down and I also get... But I guess it would have been better to stay high and then maybe drift towards him or, or back at him or something for the down beat. Yeah, and the problem... So another problem is that, like, once you put yourself on this platform... So putting mm -hmm. yourself on this platform is going to be really good if he's going to like hold full forward, right? But it's going to mm -hmm. be really not that great if he just decides to fall here because then there's all this distance that's harder for you to cover. And that's what happens mm -hmm. with the Falcon Kick. He's like down here and you're up here. Uh, you're too far in like horizontally, relatively speaking. So you can't get to him. Then you just happen to kill him with the back air. Yeah. So I there's, like, I'm, so I'm there's really a couple sure. more that happen like this. Um, let's see if we can find them. Okay, yeah, right here. Uh, well, you even messed up. I messed up LB. my ledge grab, yeah. <laughs> Here though, only... nope, I can that was fine because he went low. I think yeah. you have a more decent idea of what's supposed to happen whenever he goes low, uh, except for the edge guards around the drift that you missed up, uh, that that you mistimed uh, back carrying uh, later in the game. Yeah. So what do I do in that situation where like I get him off again? Right? Was that an okay thing to go for to, to run off and jump here, or should I be waiting for the jump? I guess I can't really wait, right? Because if he keeps drifting, he can just get to the ledge. No, I don't think he can just get to the ledge. I mean, you can try to. Let me see. So right here is probably uh -huh. have to make a decision. So you decide to jump, and then 
Uh, I don't know. I don't think he can, like, make it to the ledge just by holding forward here. I guess it's because he jumped here that it's, like, kind of weird. I, I don't think this shine is ever necessarily going to hit him. Yeah, the shine is, like, kind of weird. You would usually, like, cover... You would, like, double jump back air. You would, like, full hop back air here or something to cover mm -hmm. this jump. Or if you went low, usually what I would suggest is something like this. Um, So you up smash him off right here. Then you run forward, and then you turn around, you jump off backwards. So you do a backflip right here. And then you can choose to double jump back air here to cover a jump, or you can just fall to ledge. Because if he goes low, and that because if he goes low, you just take the ledge, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, the, the way I jumped off, I guess, limited my options. If I was facing the other way, I could have like had more spacing or more options for my double jump. Yeah. Probably like a dash wave dash to the right after the up smash and then turn around. Yeah, it's because, actually, this is a, a weirdly awkward position because you chose to shine here. Mm -hmm. So, like, you you choosing to shine here made it, like, awkward so that you... I mean, like, once you shine here, you're pretty much locked into double jumping, right? Mm -hmm. So then, like, you double jump at a really awkward timing where you can't really cover his up B. So you can still, like... I mean, if you wanted to, you could still do the shine, to be honest but you would have to time it a little better. I get like, so I do catch him before he lands on this one. My backer doesn't go the right way. I, This is kind of what I mean sometimes when I say like overcomplicating things. Like, so if we play this slower, I I jump and I back air him before he's actionable again, like even before his landing starts. Yeah. But um, but he drifted like, full in, right? Yeah, so like the positioning doesn't let me actually hit him all the way. Yeah, and this has like to he, do he with, gets reversed. And this like stems from you shining and then being like, oh, well, I'm, now I have to double jump. So you double jump and you're like, well, I still want to hit him, be close enough to hit him this way. So you wave land backwards and then he just, just forward. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of this really stems from the shine. So like, if you imagine that you just like, uh, you run across the stage here and then like, okay, so you laser land here and you land and then from here, instead of running forward and doing the shine, you could jump off backwards and then cover everything with like this kind of motion. Yeah, oh, it's like the same, yeah, it's pretty much the same spot as before, right? It's like, instead of jumping off and doing the the shine, and I wonder if I'm like, to be honest, I don't remember if I'm trying to do the shine to turn around, but it's like, it would be so much better to instead just turn around and then jump out, right? And look yeah, for a second. It's like, know. it's awkward because of how you like, of the way you shine or whatever. And that's all fine. Yeah, that that edge guard, this missed edge guard happens like three times. What's the better way to do that? Should I jump further like straight up or? So like when, when he gets the up be that close, um, because I, I don't have time to like immediately let go and shine, right? Because I just hit him in that position. Uh -huh. Is yeah. there like a different spacing for the back air, a different move choice for... Uh... Okay, so you're actual right here. The circle's pretty right. much gone, so you're actual right now. Uh-huh. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Because our goal is going to be to hit him before his drift can come into play. Right. So I guess it took me 11 frames to let go and start something, but if I had acted like five or six frames sooner, he wouldn't have been able to drift, right? Because he can't drift during the... Uh... Right, on his way up. And then right. here, yeah. he's reached the top, and he's, like, pulling back now. Holding full back, yeah. So, like, so you backers. want to be back airing him right here. So this is, like... At the peak partially. of the drift. 
yeah, this is yeah. partially a, a placement issue. I think back air is fine. I think it's a wonderful choice here. Uh, but you're like hitting here, but you you want to like aim for the top of his up B, so it's right yeah, there. Yeah, I could have go I could have positioned it so it would have been where he wasn't able to to drift out right. Like yeah, yeah, that yeah. might have hit full drift forward, but I could have just hit the top of the up B. Yeah, so let's see. We're gonna see this like two more times on the right, so uh, we're probably gonna see the same thing where you just don't put your back your up your back in the right place. Okay. Uh, so you hit him, then I think that up there is fine. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, once I show you this flowchart, like, this situation will become a lot more clear. Which you right. might not like the I'm first kind show. of looking for that. Yeah, but I, I mean, I should definitely. There's there's ways I can position better to react to it, right? So I'm waiting to see the up B, and then I'm attacking the up B before he's able. To, before the mix up, right? Yeah. If I have the timing. And then, like, once you once you like know this flowchart. Yeah, because right there again, I yeah, could have. Yeah. This is I, the same thing uh, where we talked about where you put your back hair into the wrong place because you you can aim for right here. Right, because you aim it right No here. matter what, he has to go to that spot. No yeah. matter where he drifts out. Yeah, yeah you're, the way you're up being kind of suggests that you're like, uh, maybe you are like a little bit scared. Like, oh, you want to like go back to stage just in case, but uh, against Falcon, like it's okay. Just like you can, you can just go out and back air him even in a spot where you have to like up be back to stage, and it will be fine. And then he just dies eventually. Okay, so let me show you. Uh, YouTube. Uh, can I add window capture? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, YouTube. Uh, SVAT versus Wizro Vessel. That's the go to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just literally picked this. Um, once you okay, so once you like know this flowchart, you'll notice that everyone does it. Everyone just spams it all the time. Uh, Magi does this flowchart. Sfat does this flowchart. Uh, basically, all the top spaces do this flowchart against Falcon. Okay, let's see. You see this? Okay, so this is so so even off of back throw, right? He back throws, mm -hmm. he jumps off, so Camp Falcon's like lower away. Yeah. and close, and he jumps off backwards and then double jumps and back airs. Wizzy is even like double jump kneeing here, and then it just loses the back air. Then he just grabs the ledge. Okay, let's see. I, I literally don't remember, like, oh, <laughs> hilarious. Mash side B. Okay, so he goes low. Uh, you do, you already do a similar thing. We're uh, talking about the high recoveries here. So come on, someone get hit off stage, huh? Oh, I went low. All right, so he rolls the ledge. It back here sends actually sound the wrong way, but it starts from rolling to ledge. He fucked up the flowchart. That one, that time, he also fucked it up because so he grabbed the ledge for some ungodly reason when Falcon was still. Oh, he did the exact same thing I did. He grabbed the ledge was high, got the drift, and did the back air too close to the stage. Yeah, That's for fun. some ungodly reason, he grabbed yeah, the ledge right where Falcon was high. Okay. Oh yeah, roll to the ledge. Back air. <laughs> At that time, he waited longer than he needed to to jump. He actually just short hop back aired. Hilarious, was he just really just raw need him in neutral? Okay, yeah, yeah. This is gonna be a good one. All right, 
So back air, roll to the ledge, jump, back, and then jump, and then back air. Roll to the ledge, jump, double jump, back air. And you see how the consistent, how consistently he's aiming the spot right here. So yeah, back he's air. he's kind of always hitting him as soon as it's like the apex of the up Yeah, right? so he right here, right. Turned. And yeah. then if Falcon's like, so if Falcon's like super high, then you would full hop off backwards, and then you would double jump back air. But since Falcon's like a little bit lower, you short hop off, and then you, you double jump back air as the top is up B. And then they're low, and then you just back air. That is the entire flow chart. Yeah, I definitely see it. So let's see as Fed do it some more. <laughs> All right. Roll to ledge, and then he reacts. Oh, drift back, we're grabbing the ledge. But he also could have just back aired there. Yeah. But it all starts off of roll to ledge. Yeah, because you want to be facing the other way. So yeah, you want to be facing, not only do you want to be facing the other, facing with your back to ledge, but it also like controls the spacing of where you will put your back air so that you'll be able to jump off. You'll be able to full hop like in a direction that's like most off the stage and high so that you can catch the top of his up B. Mm -hmm. See, see right here, he didn't roll to the ledge. See, he's not exactly at the edge. And then he does the back air and then back air hits him the wrong way. Yeah. And then here, yeah. And then Wizzy had to do this incredible air dodge, right? But he sets it up, and you can easily see this back air is actually about to hit. And Even at that air dodge, you might be able to hit him again. Yeah, he yeah, actually he was still able to hit him, but he chose neutral air instead of back air, right? He could have back aired. He actually probably had time to back air off again. Oh, get owned. Get fucking owned. What, roll at the ledge? Okay, you went low? Okay, grab the ledge. God damn, it took a long time between matches there. Hey, there's a wizard upset. That's true. It looked like SFAT was the one taking a while. All right. Oh, awkward. Yeah, it's literally just facing away and matching yeah. back air to punt it. Like, cause I guess you, you face you face away from him, and then you just aim your back air with the double jump, and it, it just goes. There isn't like a whole lot that Falcon can do easily about it. He just has to get tricky. See so backwards jump, mm -hmm. and he double jumps, and he aims his double jump to hit the top of up B. No room for drift. Didn't stand a chance. It's funny because I, I like I know that Falcon can't drift until the up B is over, but I just don't wasn't thinking to like you how to may position not be myself for it, right? To aim to hit that. And a lot just, of times it feels wasn't. like, oh, like he's probably too far for me to actually hit him before he can drift. But uh, basically, you can go higher and farther than you think you can. And if yeah. you hit the back air, then like you don't need to worry so much about getting back to the stage quickly, because like you just get him and he's gone. Yeah. All right, I'll see you later, Wizzy. Oh shit. Uh, whoops. See right here, he jumped off a little bit early, but yeah, this is an example of like trying for a little further than you can get, right? Yeah, but not only that, but he just like jumped a little bit early. But you see, it all still all sets up the same with roll to the ledge, and then uh, Wizzy, uh, he probably double jumped a little too early, to be honest. That's probably what went wrong here. So roll to the ledge, and then he sees Falcon's height. Falcon is this high, so he's going to full hop. He's above the height of Fox's full hop. 
So Fox full hops here. Uh, and then, but then he like double jumps relatively quickly, which he didn't have to. It's like jump, double jump. You should just die there. Yeah. Uh, what happened? Uh, react. Okay. Let's see. Uh, whoops. Awkward. You can't do it like me, Esfat, and trying to drift off. <laughs> Oh yeah, S has pop off and he starts dancing. Very funny. That is very funny. <laughs> wow, this is a long day. That's a big pop off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can watch Magi versus None. Yeah. Uh, LACS three. And it supplies. Am I gonna watch Falco do Roar to the Ledge backer? Yes, it, it's it's the same edge guard to be honest. All right, all right, right here. Uh, hit Falcon off stage. Roll to ledge, yeah, and then react. So roll. T so we hit him once. Roll to ledge. Falcon is above the height of Fal of Falcon's full hop, so we're full hopping. And then uh, she did it better than SFS. She reacted to him going low, and then just double jumps. Nothing, nothing to be done. Jump backwards. Missed it because she didn't roll to the ledge. Who invented this? Because the roll to the ledge, there's no way that's super intuitive. It's got to no be idea. someone's. But I, I know that Clindy showed her the switch art. Oh, get owned. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, it must have gone down there. Okay. Same thing here. No roll to the ledge this time, but. So she'll turn around and then you jump to follow. Around. Okay. Well, wow, none got owned. What the fuck? Something I'm noticing that's good too is if you force like an up B that's that's too high, you can usually get down and punish it. Yep. You don't see a lot of examples of the Falcon like doing that, but the few times you see it, you can tell there's time. You just need to make sure that you can double jump out with back air to hit him where he doesn't have a choice. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. Even right there, she mistimed it a little bit. And she could have gotten hugged here, but like, he's up being, right? And then he just gets hit. Mm -hmm. And of course, with Falco, it's going to be slightly different, but the general structure is the same. Okay, let's uh, fast forward. Yeah, you see? You see? Even in this situation, random backer sends him off stage. We roll to the ledge. Uh, jump off backwards and then just double jump and back air him. Easy peasy. Okay, so all this in mind, mean. let's watch the rest of these games and then see the spots where you could be uh, back airing. And then I'll also feel more free to talk a little bit about other stuff. Uh, that's really bad pressure, but whatever, he respected it. That's good. Owned. <laughs> he just got wrecked. Good roll. Yeah, you see, you see this spot. You hit him off stage. It's like awkward because 
So like you see where it's awkward because like you involve yourself with the ledge and then it's hard for you to get high. Yeah, I'm enough. doing like this I'm doing this like run down shine double jump where I have like no height. Or if I just Yeah, like, because once you double jump, jump, like you only have your double jump. You know, you don't have access yeah. to short hop double jump. You don't have ox access to full hop double jump. You only have your double jump. And then like and then like by the time you can like do something about it, then uh he's already too far in. So like right here, I would say like right here where you hit him off. Uh, Roll jump. Like instead of being here, right here, you should be right here already and preparing to do your double jump shenanigans here. Mm -hmm. Good read. Nice hold. So this is also like super easy to practice because basically there isn't a lot that Falcon can do about it. There's enough Falcon players that you can just start trying to apply it. Ow. Jeez, okay. Like that. This is kind of weird. Alright, so what are we drilling here for? Uh, there's nothing there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I like, I'm trying to like balance the O's. Like, I know you like to just like, like to push buttons and stuff. So yeah, like, well, this one for sure. It's like, I, I see him coming in, but this is way early on the timing, right? Like I, th this drill is to cover if he runs directly at me to attack at this timing, but the spacing was just way too wide. For yeah. I don't think it's like, I land good. my drill basically the time he lands in front of me, but like, yeah, that's without a mover. So you could get a little closer, right? Uh, I find like a lot of Fox players do better in this matchup when instead of playing, you know, like... Uh, like, uh, blah, 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 whatever, we'll get to a spot. Instead of playing really far away, they're more like in a medium awkward range. Because against Falcon, a lot of times where you want to be is you want to be in this awkward spot where he can't like near in place or up air in place and hit you but uh you know if he like tries to yolo across the stage then you can just like near him in the face for doing something <laughs> so arrogant let's see what happened here You're slow on the shine. Yeah. Yeah, really slow. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay. Uh, we're, I'm gonna start watching for this. Be careful about how you do shield pressure like this, right? You know about Shine losing the stomp and stuff already, yeah? Yeah, I need to be up tilting here. Yeah, you or... up tilt, or you can just like, uh, or you can just aerial again. I like, I think I immediately catch it. That's when I get that second up tilt, because I'm standing next to him and I see him jump and I up tilt the time. You could have nared. Maybe not. Sure, if you guys back in, up tilt. Yeah. 
Right if I back aired. <laughs> yeah, so you can see like the spots where like yeah, you could just back air here, right? If I do the flow chart for this section of the game, I would have won this one. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you lost. Uh, let's yeah, see. barely. So yeah, you could have just you could have just back aired him, <laughs> basically. Uh, for sure. Oh, I see. Okay, well There's that's that. very that's very unfortunate. Unfortunate. <laughs> I remember that game because I was about to get the comeback because I found that I remember I found that forward smash. I was like, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're back airing the wrong way here, right? So this seems like. Did you think this back air was going to reverse? Uh, no. I didn't. Okay. I thought I was going to push him a little further off stage, and then I was just going to keep going. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, you had the right idea, but then, uh, obviously, when Yoshi's story is a bad stage. <laughs> yeah, so this is like, so this is, uh, like, kind of a weird range where, like, right here, I would say, is normally a great range for you. But mm -hmm. you have a few errors here. So right here, I think it's a great range for you to play grounded and short and grounded and short hopping. I think this is a pretty like bad range to try to go for uh... give me a sec here. Uh, it's a bad it's a like a bad or awkward range for you to be trying to go to the platform. So Falcon's gonna be strong against platforms in this range because like his up air is gigantic and just covers the whole platform. But if he like tries to go for an aerial here, this is like, you know, if he just like up airs in place or he does like a short air, it will probably hit to about here, which is like, you can definitely whiff punish that from here. So then you could play like a little more grounded here and then run in and then like shine or you can short hop into him or you can just like short hop into him and probably beat his move. He's going to aerial forward. This is like the ideal horizontal distance for Fox to be at, I would say. <laughs> but you. I want to be on the same like height. I don't want to be above him because then it's going to be harder to like, you won't be able to punish the aerial, right? So like going to the platform is bad there. Yeah, it's mostly that, like, being on the platform gets you owned by up air. Okay, yeah, this, all of this is solved if you face the right way. Or, like, maybe you forward tilt here. But yeah, uh, it's just, like, awkward because with all of this, you're just not facing the right way in order to hit him. I think if you had literally been facing the way during any part of that sequence, you probably would have him. Damn, okay. Oh. oh, that sucks. Yeah, I got pushed off. Uh, yeah. I got in the shield slide off or whatever, not just yeah, yeah, falling. Yeah. So I tried to jump early and then wasn't actionable. I just died. <laughs> So let's look at this. So right after this, you know you have a tech chase. Uh, I don't know. What is this? The missing plate, I guess? Yeah, I think I was supposed to drift forward in there. I'm almost sure that's what I'd want to do there. Because forward, forward air just seems or, weird. Or I like, mean, it, even that's not best. Like, getting back on the platform and regrabbing or something would be way better. But I don't know. I think, I think, maybe. I think the aerial is pretty nice, to be honest. But I think the third is better. Or I the think you, like, reverse back air here. I could probably do that too. I do not think I meant to fare at all. I'm pretty sure I was just trying to drift forward and press the A button and ended up doing it. Yeah, I think like the grab is okay. It gives you a mix up. But I think if you just like reverse back here, him off stage here, it's probably great. Because then you can go into the edge guard flow chart. But if you like get a grab, then it's like 
kind of weird because then it's like oh i'm like up throwing him at 88 or i'm like forward throwing and then the conversions get kind of weird for fox falcon and he also you know he might just like hold into hold into middle so then it's just like eh, uh i think the aerial is actually better <laughs> yeah so same back here that we already looked yeah at i gotta i gotta attack uh, the top. Yeah, less, and less, like, I'm attacking too close to stage. Once they do that up beam, they have to drift slightly forward before the up over. Yeah. Yeah. Are, yeah. Yeah, your, your back air is, like, weirdly defensively minded. I feel like I'm considering the drift before it's an option. Even though I know that it isn't. Like, when I think about it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much like all the. I mean, the shine and then dicking around doesn't like do anything for you. But I mean, I also recognize that you just like doing it. I can find time to do the stupid shenanigans while still positioning myself to properly get the back air. So I, I definitely need to look for that yeah. better, especially like. Getting the spacing with the roll or whatever, or maybe I'll find some other stupid way to do it to entertain myself. But either way, like getting there quick enough to be against the ledge and double jump, yeah. or have double jump available. Or maybe you just maybe you even just shine turn around, you know? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Full health be strong. What? I don't know, I got hugged. Uh, this is like... And this is what I'm talking about, because this is the same percent basically, right? I mean, you grabbed him at like, what, 86? Yeah, you threw mm -hmm. him at 86, and this is why when you were talking about like, on the side plot, I was like, oh, like, if I grab him, he was at 88 then, then it's like, it's probably better. I'm like, uh, I mean, it's really not. Yeah, I don't get much at all. Uh, I probably could have waited longer to, for him to hit that platform. Yeah, you could have waited for him to go on the platform, and then you could have gone for a tech chase. Then, like, what if you, like... But then the downside of that is, like, okay, so you offer a tech chase for your position. So, like, what if he rolls in? Then, uh, based off of the jump you did, then you would have, like... I mean, if you had back air, then it would have sent him the wrong way, right? Mm-hmm. And then you can't shine him because he's just gonna slide off the platform and go on the stage and be fine. Mm -hmm. I guess you could like up smash, but then you wouldn't want to up smash if he's going the other way. All right, that's so, a that was a not a good spot to get a grab. Yeah, so I happen. think like throwing at that percent. Falcon's one of those characters where it's like, to be honest, you might just prefer nair planning him over getting a grab sometimes. Yeah, uh, I think all this, like, so this, like, full hop stuff that you do right here is pretty fine. And the only suggestion I have is, like, sometimes mix this up with, like, run running shine. Because a lot of times, in order to do, in order for him to, like, hard beat running shine, he has to pick an option that doesn't do as well into like this full hoppy style so like in order to be running shine you know he's gonna have to like uh like grab or like stomp in place or uh you know something like that or like he'll like or he'll like put a knee right here and then you can just back air him for that so if you play like a little more grounded sometimes like, right here is also a hilarious position, because you, like... I don't know why we did this, basically. <laughs> so uh, that, so and then up. you <laughs> jump, and then you double jump drill. 
Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know either. There are some times where there's just buttons being pressed with less. Th there's thought a lot of the time, and other times it's like, yeah. Yeah, because, like, okay, so the deal with this is, like, so you hit this drill. You actually hit this drill, and then he ASDI'd out. Uh, yeah. I recognize that, I think, and then reset. But, like, so the big thing is, like, I'm jumping to maybe do double jump timing away or something, I think. Like like I said, I, I'm only guessing what I was thinking in this moment, because obviously I don't remember. But the only thing I can think of is the way he, like, gets caught in his movement and jabs. I'm, like, jumping once he SDIs out to avoid getting punished. And then, like, he ends up doing nothing, so I just go back and attack him anyway, I guess. I just feel like there's like this whole situation where he this... pivots. When you mm -hmm. hit this drill normally, then you would then like once you recognize you hit the drill, then you would normally go for some form of like follow up after it. Yeah, so it's like I think this is like a big awkward moment where we both got caught like confused because he SDIs out. I don't even think he recognized it because he turns around a jab and I'm like holding shield and then I jump to like get away and then change my mind. But yeah. I guess, like, when I recognize I hit it, I need, a like, a real follow-up and not just another jump. But I think this is just, like, a weird spaghetti moment. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. think... Well, I'm trying to think of the scenarios where you, like, you drill them, and then they DI, and then they DI out a little bit, right? So, mm -hmm. like, what do you do usually after drill? You'll shine, or you'll, like, turn around up tilt, or do you ever just, like, drill and then nair? Sometimes I like drill and then run away, or I'll. Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't know if I drill Nair. Uh, I think Nair is strong in this situation like that, where you hit them, where where it's like you hit them and then they get like an ASDI away, and then they're like trying to run away or something because they think you're gonna go for like drill shine, so they're like trying to SDI right, mm -hmm. and then you and then you just like immediately Nair at them. I think something like that is pretty strong. And I might try that out when I see people like if people SDI it a lot or if I'm like noticing people get out to just like I guess narrow at them. After. Yeah, it's just like whenever you drill them at like a kind of awkward spacing where you get hiccup, you can just near at them and then it will work uh for a variety of reasons. Uh as long as the spacing is right, right? So one is like it will you're so close that uh and a lot of times in scramble situations normally people's two options are like okay their their options are like they might spot dodge or roll uh they might hold shield and they might dash away uh so like if they dash away the nair just hits them right mm -hmm. uh and if they hold shield uh they're so close to you that nair will definitely cross them up and then you'll be fine and then uh it should be still like safe against spot dodge or roll but uh, if they're spot dodging or rolling, they're probably freaking out. Right. So something like this kind of like fake conversion uh, that will result in you being able to like smother them is uh, something I think you should go for more often. Because a lot of this matchup is also like getting on top of Falcon and then smothering him. And then you push him out, and then you back, and you turn around, and you back air him off stage. Yeah, this was uh, a little bit slow of situation recognition on your part. Mm -hmm. So you had this wasted full hop. Actually, you, 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 going for the shine spike is completely correct. But you recognize this a little bit late, and uh, I mean. So normally you can't like you can't hit confirm shine, but in this case you should probably know that you're about to that you should be able to hit confirm this shine in particular because this is nair shine. Just nair him, yeah. Yeah, you hit him with the nair, so you know that this shine will work. There's a good chance for me full hopping in that position that I was trying to wave that shot of the shine that I missed it. Mm -hmm. And then just like too much shine was lost. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Because, yeah, I mean, you see this was, like, totally right, but you just, yeah. like, weren't fast enough. And it's because of this wasted uh, full hop. Yeah, I'm almost positive that I was just supposed to be waved dash out of the shine, and I missed the input, so I just get the jump instead. Here, you're not crispy on your turnarounds. Very important to get this turnaround. Um, to be honest, I'm not particularly sure why you shined. Um, I think shining doesn't, like, particularly make sense at this spot. 
Um, you hit the forward air, and then like you should turn around here because like you can turn around here and then, you know, a turn around up tilt is the obvious choice. Mm -hmm. And I think Shine is like so small that it just like never hits or does anything meaningful here. Especially after an up air, uh, the or forward air, man. The forward air, I think, was probably missed input, and then after that, it was like not being fully aware of what was going to be good to hit off of that or how far it was going to send him. Yeah, also, by ground. Yeah, but that definitely just like what there was. I didn't recognize the spacing that he was going to be at after um, yeah. I hit him with forward air. I like so into the wave shine pressure. I like this wave shine pressure a lot. I don't like some of the other ones that you were doing in game one, where you're just like crossing up the shield. I think that's really bad because it can just be shield grab. But this kind mm -hmm. of like shine wave dash back, this is real. That's really good. Mm. Yeah, that's really good because then and actually you should probably not shoot a laser here because okay. So let's think about wave shine back. What does like this specifically destroy? It specifically uh, destroys them instant rolling and grabbing. Yeah. And then uh, I think laser uh, wastes your wastes your opportunity. So like if he rolls in and then you like have this laser, then you don't get to destroy him. And also, the the thing that I cut. Yeah, I guess I need to recognize the roll too because the thing I'm covering like I hit the shine and then I expect him to grab and then I want laser land shine him again. So it's just like more mm -hmm. buttons than necessary, but um, yeah, it, it's that only covers the grab, then, right? I kind of waste all the time that I had if he rolled instead. Yeah, if he rolls, I don't know if you have time to do that. To do that, yeah. Laser, and the, the like, other big one too is done. in this situation where he jumped, it definitely does nothing then. Whereas, like at least if I right, I'm, I'm waiting to punish the grab, I can recognize the jump and maybe still catch it or, or get a better uh, position from it. Yeah, I'm I think not sure. if, he, if he jumps here, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. Uh, but the good, I mean, the good news about this shine, right, and the reason why this shine is so good is because it's actually extremely non-committal and it still covers, like, common escape options. Because, like, okay, he jumps out and then he's fine, to be honest. I don't think you can catch him afterwards. Right. But, uh you're not in trouble at all right and that's like and that's like a huge huge upside right because like if you compare doing a uh, shield pressure if you're going to try to do like an extended shield pressure sequence right and then he like reads your timing or he just like blindly guesses right then he might get a grab and like that's a terrible thing that you could have happened to you right but if like uh the worst case scenario is like Oh, I shine and I wave dash back, and then he just like jumps, but he can't do anything to me. And the worst case scenario is that like he's in the air. That's great for you, you know? Right. That's very low risk, and then you can potentially and then well, you could potentially blow him up off of it. Yeah, and then this is like why the, I have these spots where I think you should like be a little, you should just choose grounded options sometimes. Because as you like spam full hop here, you just get wrecked by him spamming back air. So you're grounded sometimes, then you would, you would destroy him for that. Like, you can literally, you can literally like jump cancel up smash at this position. And then, like, the things he needs to do to play around you just, like, jump cancel off smashing at him uh, is, like, so different from the things that uh, he needs to do to wall you back, wall you full hopping, that it will, like, it's, uh, you get to play both sides of the mix up, and both of them are high reward for you if uh, you get it right. Yeah, because like even though he, it was very easy for him to wall me there. He didn't get that much off of it. Whereas if I had the mix up there, like, yeah, the way, problem is just that spot. you're like always full hopping there, and then you don't, and then you don't really have like knowledge of the other side of the mix up. So he only ever has to do one response. Whoops, went to up tilt. It's fine. Nice. 
yeah, so all this awkwardness is just like... Because it all stems from you like lasering like this and then you're still facing forward. And by now you should already be facing backwards. Right. But it's facing away would be so much easier. Like here I get to be face away with the shine turnaround and grab ledge, but it's like uh, I'm I don't have most of the mix up to like or what is it most of the situation to play with anymore? Yeah. I have so much less time. Yeah, see, you full hop in this position a lot, like almost every time, and then like sometimes he covers it and sometimes he doesn't. So you get to the awkward range, which is where you want to be a lot of the time. You, you want to be in this awkward position where he like can get hit by a running shine or JCL smash, or he could get hit by full hop or short hopping at him, but uh... You don't, like, really take advantage of the grounded half. Oh. Cause once you get on top of them, you can pretty much, like, push whatever buttons you want. The question is only about like getting to that getting to that range where you can establish the mix up that lets you get on top of him. Wow. There's a whole nother minute in this game? How? I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking about that too. That's a long time. It's probably just going to become incredibly sloppy melee. Oh, you were slow. This is the type of thing that you need to get better at too. Like, this is going to help so much. Like, I mean, you punish him, that's fine. But, like, you also could have just gotten something off of this Nair, you know? The first one, yeah. You're so slow. Look how actionable you are. Okay. I might have uh, pressed down B early and then panicked. Yeah. That's one I get like a lot when I'm trying to do those like Nair Shines. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not that I'm that slow to react to the hit, it's that I miss the input by pressing down B before, like, you know, sooner than I'm supposed to. Yeah. And then not recognizing that it didn't come. Okay. Okay, let's talk about this situation. This situation's a... Okay. Uh, so who's favorite here in this spot? Um, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Okay. Uh, it's probably evenish, but I think, like, if you're, like, right below him, Falcon's probably better because, like, you're directly in the range of, like, him doing an unreactable hitbox, but he's, like not really in the range of you doing on reactable hitbox i mean he is but like he's like he's blocking already so uh basically he's fine unless if you're like you aim for his foot on the shield poke which would be a totally reasonable thing to go for here um but who's favored right here uh that should be me for sure. Yeah, definitely you, right? Yeah. All right. So what if, uh, so like when did it? So actually, who's favorite right here? Here's another question. Who's favorite right here? Uh, still me because he's in landing lag. Yeah, he's point, in right? landing. Yeah, he's in landing lag, and then so you could like maybe true punish this. Probably not because, yeah, he gets his shield up immediately. Uh, but like this gives you a position where you can just be like right here and then he can't do anything to you so where you want to be generally is like once this position occurs is you want to be like right here because what's going to happen is that uh they're going to like 
they're gonna like either like brainlessly like shield drop and then like up air or something and then you're just gonna come in here and then hit him for free because he did a shitty aerial or he's going to like maybe jump off he might like jump off and then try to hit you but because he's in shield he can't dash jump so he still can't get you if you're like standing right here and then uh you can you can like beat him since he's going towards you and you can do a hitbox or he's gonna like uh shield drop backwards and then he's gonna be here and you're gonna be here and you're not gonna go true punish it but you're fine nothing bad happens to you so right here you want to get right here but instead you were uh, I guess you were like dash attacking to like read a landing or something. What, what, what happened here? Probably. I don't know. I might have even just missed trying to jump and press a button. I don't know. Maybe you were trying to like jump in there or something. Like do like instant back air, instant there, and then I just hit the A button before I hit the jump button. Uh, let's see what happens here. Back air, and then miss the tech chase. I see. Ow, no. No, 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 no. Okay, let's see. I don't know why you're dash attacking me. I think that's pretty poor. Oh, uh, so you should... Oh, why'd you double jump? Alright, why are we double jumping? I'm probably freaking out, running away. I think this is game five. Yeah. Okay, so like, I think full Making here bad is choices. I think full yeah. hopping here is great. I think double jumping here is really weak. Uh, as you can see, the difference is that when you full hop, like, and he misses that, you could have just totally back aired him. Uh, mm -hmm. And then as soon as you double jump, like, you give up the opportunity to hit him. Whoops. Back up to that. Something to this mid. Okay. Okay, yeah, bad spacing. Okay, so uh, this is a spacing that you need to ingrain in your head. All right, so he jumps from here, this yellow flower, mm -hmm. and then this is like, this is the farthest he could possibly go. Like he did everything like, uh, he did like jump in place and then he like pulled back slightly. So this is where he ends up. But you're, and then you're here, and not only are you here, you like you're like all the way back here. But if you had just stood here, so this is kind of the range you want to be at. So let's back. Yeah, a little up. closer. Because I am trying to, I go back in to try to punish it, and I get forward tilted in the face. Yeah, but it's definitely you don't just because I went, I ran too far. Yeah, you don't have to, time for that. For but sure. he was like right here, and then you were like right here. This is the same kind of like awkward distance where I was talking about, where he has to do an aerial forward if he wants to hit you. Uh, but you can stand here and then you can just like, so you could have like neared him and you would have probably won here because you would like neared like this more in place. In place aerials generally beat approaching aerials. Um, or if you had stood here and you had read this particular drift, you could have gone uh, with punish. Oh, nice dude. Um, we're good players. Yeah, I don't mind all of that. Let me, let me see it again, though. Alright, back here, here. Uh, ready to read a roll, and then jump into him again. Um, well, I think you could have gotten shield grab there, so that was plus some good. I think if you, you could have, like... This would have been fine if you went for, like, a cross-up, and then you edge cancelled. Yeah, or if the timer was, timing was a little slower, I think, maybe, uh, or lower, I could have probably not been able to get... Uh, no! Oh. Yeah, sad. Oh. Okay, whatever. Okay, so things to work on probably is figure out uh, the figure out the edge guard. Uh, as long as you can get near to the ledge and your, your back is to the ledge, and then you want to, like, you want to, like, jump off with his up B and still have the ability to double jump, uh, mm -hmm. then all else is like is pretty much fine. And then if he goes low, 
then you can react, you can fast fall, and then double jump back air low, or you can just take the ledge. Either one of those works. Um, in neutral, go for more... Uh, you already are finding yourself, perhaps intuitively, at a pretty nice distance for Fox. Just go for some grounded options at that point sometimes instead, or uh, lower options, because you always full hop. So, like... You can just like short hop at this position sometimes, and it should also w work well. Yeah, I just need to play the other side of the mix up a little bit more. Just like figure out like the comfortable timings to like either do a turnaround up air or, or even like a jump cancel up smash or just like a lower yeah. move. Right. And then finally, um, on on a number of moves where you hit it with like a stray hit, you just like. It takes you a little bit of time to realize it's an awkward situation, but I feel like it's just weird to me because I feel like the way you play, you should be very used to awkward situations and moving out. Yeah, I actually think, I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I feel like most of the situations, especially like, usually what happens, uh, if, if I have a move come out like that and there's like that freeze and it's like, uh-oh, what happened? It's usually like a, I did the input, but I did the input too early and got nothing instead, and that's usually when it throws me, and I have that. Stuff. So I definitely need to like clean that up, like. But like that's why it happens because the way I'm usually playing, I'm usually pushing that, or I'm usually looking for stray hits and trying to convert. But it'll be like that situation where it's like I get the weird nair or the weird aerial or whatever, and I press shine, but I press shine before my landing animation was done or whatever, and nothing happened. Yeah, that's usually I, it's I like, be totally off oops. space here, but like, could it possibly be because you're not used to hitting like people? Like, not, I don't mean like, oh, people, do, I mean like literally hitting something with it. Um, I don't know. I don't think it, I really think like for the few ones that I saw on that one anyway, it's like, I think it was like an early button and then taking too long to recognize the early button. Well, that's what I'm saying about the early button, right? Because obviously, like, you have to account for hit stop. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that could be it for sure. So that's why I'm saying, like, is it possibly because you're not used to doing the motion on, like, uh, like an actual body compared to doing it on, like, empty space? Because it seems like if you're pressing it early, then you're probably pressing at the timing where it would hit if you if you missed your aerial. Yeah, I mean, probably, because um, I don't play a ton of practice against not people anymore, but most of my experience in this game was, like, pre-Uncle Punch, pre-whatever, and I have a lot of practice hours, like, doing the single-player glitch and running around on the stage, like, yeah. for the majority of my missions. Yeah, because it seems like a lot of your timings are, are set into the rhythm of, like, hitting nothing and then moving immediately out of it. But you need to be able to train it to also learn the hitting something and moving out of it yeah but fortunately you know you have like eggs and stuff that you can practice that on or just people whatever yeah uh, i think cleaning that up will be good for sure yeah. i'll probably just do it in matches more yep sounds good but uh yeah i definitely need to just like i guess i could literally play any falcon for that particular flow chart which is really nice uh, yeah Find my talk and get that flow chart and practice that. Um, I can't think of anything else in particular. I guess next time I lose to like another matchup where I feel like I'm missing something quintessential, like edge guarding versus Falcon, <laughs> that'll probably be the next thing. But there's yeah. nothing in mind right now that I can think of. Okay, yeah, sounds good. All right, thank you, Howard. Yep, no problem. Peace. This is recorded and available in case uh, I need refreshers. Yeah, I'm about to put it on YouTube right after this. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem.